So you want to live your best life as a teenager, but you're struggling right now. You might want to get into the gym. You might feel unconfident with yourself. You might hate the way you look. You might feel like you've got no good friends or you feel depressed or you just want to get your money up. You want to look after yourself, look after your family, whatever it is, fear not because I am here to solve this for you today. So my story starts when I was 13 years old. I was addicted to video games, playing video games literally 12 to 14 hours a day. As you can see down there, FIFA 15, 3,600 hours played. FIFA 16, 1,500 hours played. So over the course of two years, I spent 5,000 hours on two games. Along with all of the other games I was playing, I was literally spending 12 hours to 14 hours every single day. And because of this, I lost interest in doing sports outside of school. I used to play football from when I was like five years old up until... 13 years old, I became extremely antisocial and introverted and I lost literally all of my self-confidence and all of my self-belief. As you can see this picture here of me on this bike, I used to be, go on the, get on this bike right here after school and ride home as fast as I could so I could play as much video games when I got home for as long as I could. Then we fast forward to me being 18 to 19 years old. This is when I sort of started my own self-improvement journey. This is what I like to call the light path. I will get onto that in a second. So I started going to the gym and improving my physique. I had my own business that was making me money so I didn't have to work a job and I could look after myself and my family. I started to invest into my own self-improvement journey, you know, investing in courses, programs, uh, mentorship, books, whatever it was, even the gym, just investing in my own self-improvement. And because of all of this hard work that I was putting in, I started to rekindle that belief and that sort of flame that I had inside of me to turn my life around. And over time, I was getting rid of all of my bad habits and trying to improve every single month. So I didn't go from literally bad habits to good habits in the space of one month. This has taken years and years and years. I'm in my early 20s now, but my self-improvement journey started when I was 18. Now, as a teenager, you can go down one of two paths. The first path is the dark path. This is the path of bad habits, destroying yourself from the inside out and you're mentally and physically drained and you literally hate your life. With this path, you are setting yourself up to be playing life on catch up mode in your 20s. So you think right now, just because you're into a little bit of self-improvement, maybe that you're ahead of everyone else. But if you choose to go down this dark path, you know, you continue your bad habits. All of the people that you went to school with or go to school with currently are going to run laps around you when you're older. They go off to university, they get a decent paying job whilst you're just sitting at home being a bum saying, I want a life of freedom, but you don't do anything about it. You don't act on your self-improvement goals. So in the end, all of these people that you seem to think that you're maybe better than, or you th feel like you know more about life than them, they're running laps around you because they're actually doing something with their life, even if it's just getting a job. But there is another path, and this path is the light path. This is the path of self-improvement, the growth mindset, and trying to be better by 1% every single day, as cliche as it sounds. <laughs> this path will set you up for a life of success, freedom, and allow you to look after the people that you care about, a life of happiness and beauty. Every single day you wake up and you think life is good. So as a teenager, you can choose which path you go down. At the first part of my life here, this was my dark path. This was my path of bad habits and me just pretty much destroying my whole life. But at 18, I sort of matured a little bit and I realized this self-improvement stuff, like it's real and it works. And this is the light path. This is the path where I was waking up every day feeling like life is good. Life is going on an upwards trajectory. Now, I want to introduce to you this process called inversion thinking. So if you want to live your best life as a teenager and go down this light path, rather than asking yourself, how can you live your best life? You're going to ask yourself, how can I live my worst life? And you might think, how does this even work? But just, just hear me out here, right? What you're going to do is you're going to list out all the ways you can live your worst life and do the exact opposite of that. And the reason why this works is because our brains are better at finding problems than they are at finding solutions. So if I was to ask you to write down five things you're happy about, like right now, so write down five things that you're happy about of your life and also write down five things that you're not happy about, you're probably going to find it way easier to list the negative things that you aren't happy about in your life. Just because I don't know why, but our brains are just able to find problems easier than we can find solutions. Now, this inversion thinking process can be used in literally every single area of your life. So instead of asking yourself, how can I get my dream physique, for example, you can ask yourself, how can I stay skinny my whole life? How can I stay looking like this, this little skinny stick that I used to look like? How can I stay like that my whole life? And then I'd list out things like don't join a gym, don't lift any weights, eat highly processed food, you know, chocolate, McDonald's. And if you do go to the gym, don't go consistently. That is how 
I would stay like this. That is how, if you look like this, this is how you stay like this. But what you actually do is you do the opposite of what you just listed. So with this in mind, I'm going to tell you right now the things that you need to avoid to live your best life. So we're going to go through all of the points and you're going to avoid all of these things and do the exact opposite. Let's go. So the first thing is the I'll start on Monday mentality. You might have said this before because I've always said I've said this so many times. I'm going to start the gym from Monday. Or I'm going to start my self-improvement journey on Monday or I'll completely stop playing video games on Monday. Why do we need to wait until Monday to do anything like if you're someone that says this, you're putting off doing what you need to do. And when Monday comes along, you will do this thing for maybe one day or two days and then give up. So you say, OK, I'm going to completely stop playing video games from Monday. Monday comes around. You don't play video games on Monday. You don't play it on Tuesday either. Wednesday comes around, you start again. Or when it comes to the gym, if you say, I'll start on Monday going to the gym, this is what it will happen. This, this picture here. What? Like, it's already Monday. Like, Monday is going to come around like that and you're going to not want to go. So why don't you just jump in the deep end and go today? Like right now, why don't you just get up and go to the gym? Like, or, or, or if it's late where you are, go in the morning, go first thing in the morning, just go to the gym, wake up earlier before school and go, go right after school, just go to the gym because you putting it off until Monday is just, you just delaying it further. And this leads me on to my next point, waiting for the perfect time to act. You know, the, the cliche, the cliche saying, the cliche phrase, whatever you call it, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. And the reason why I think this is so true is because there will never be a perfect time. I'll go to the gym once I've figured out how to do the exercises with correct form so I don't look stupid. I'll start my business when I finish school so I'm not distracted. If you need perfect conditions to act, the moment the conditions are imperfect is the moment that you'll stop. So you might as well pursue your goals whilst the conditions aren't perfect. So if you can create success when things are bad in your life, when the conditions aren't perfect, if they ever go bad again, you'll still be successful because you've learned to do it when your conditions are bad. If you look on my channel the past seven days, right, I have uploaded every single day for like for the past actually nearly a month. I've uploaded every single day. But I went and traveled to Cape Verde for the past week and I could have chose not to upload. But I sat down in our little apartment where we were staying in and I made a video every single day whilst I was there because the conditions were bad where other people probably wouldn't do it because they're like oh, i'm on holiday but me i said no i'm gonna upload every single day whilst the conditions are bad so if they ever get bad again i'm not gonna stop i'm gonna keep going because i've done it before so i can do it again now the next one is valuing other people's opinions over your own i know this sounds crazy but you are successful when you say you are not when other people say you are I have 300 subscribers on my YouTube right now, but I am successful on YouTube and I'm working hard every single day to become more successful. I choose to think it. If someone wants to tell me, oh, Nathan, you've only got 300 subscribers, it's nothing. I don't care. I'm successful in my own eyes because I choose to be. I don't care what other people think. Now, there are, there are people who are millionaires out there and they still think they aren't successful. Obviously, we might think they are, but them, them, they themselves don't think they're successful yet. Conversely, you have other people that have not achieved anything in their lives, but they think they are successful. But the truth is, they are both right. You are whatever you think you are, not what other people think you are. So if what anyone else thinks, you can be whoever or whatever you want to be. You've just got to put in the work. Now, the next point is avoiding working on what matters the most. Spending all day searching for the best gym workouts and the best diet rather than just going to the gym and figuring out the diet along the way. Spending all day creating your logo when the logo doesn't make you doesn't make you money. The actions in the business is what makes you money. We do this to feel like we're doing something, to feel like we're productive or whatever. But the harsh truth is we're not. We're just delaying working on what matters the most. Because usually the things that matter the most are probably the harder things to do. So for me to grow my channel, I need to focus on creating content. You know, writing my scripts, writing my ideas down, writing the thumbnail ideas down and uploading it. The thing that matters the most to me isn't what my pro what the best profile picture for my account is because when I made my account I literally went on my phone looked at my pictures of myself and said oh this one looks all right and I just literally picked it like it doesn't matter because when you when you come to my channel you not come into my channel for the profile picture you're coming for the content and the videos so the more that I can teach you the better the videos will perform the better I am on camera the better my videos will perform the better I get at making thumbnails the better my videos will perform so those things for me are, is what's going to push my YouTube career not doing a profile picture or doing like the bio of my account or something. And this is the same for you and everything that you want to do in your life. 
the most successful people in the world didn't become successful by doing the most things or working for the most hours. They got successful doing the right things. So do the things that will move the needle first, or sorry, do the things that will move the needle the most first, then do the other things after when you have free time. For example, if you want to start the gym, the thing that moves the needle the most is you actually going to the gym. Obviously, you need to be aware of, you know, the right form and whatnot. So do a tiny bit of research on that. Don't spend weeks and weeks. Just watch a couple of videos. The way I am, I've been going to the gym for like the past four years and I will be in the gym watching videos on still now to this day on how to do the, like the perfect form on, on Romanian deadlifts, for example. I'll be looking at the video on the form and doing it, still practicing. I could just sit at home and watch loads of videos and put off going to the gym, but I know the gym is actually going to the gym and lifting the weights is what's going to bring me the results, not sitting down, just watching videos all day. So the next point is fail once and quit forever. You fail once and you think, ah, I guess it's not for me. Like you join the gym and you see all of these other people around you, dumbbell pressing 30 kg, 40 kg, and you can barely do 5 kg. So you think, ah, yeah, I'm bad at this. This isn't for me. And then you just quit. But what you've got to realize is failure is necessary to achieve anything. And does and it doesn't matter what you do in your life. You cannot avoid failure. If you want to be successful at anything, you need to face failure. To achieve your dream physique, you need to fail in the gym and you need to fail with your diet and trial and error of loads of different things until you can figure out what works the best for you. To learn to get better at managing your thoughts and to sort of cure your own depression, you need to fail at meditating. So sometimes you might get angry in life. For example, you might someone might say something to you and you just flip out at them and just say a bunch of mean things that you didn't really mean. But you've got to fail in that respect and then you've got to think after, how, did, how could I have reacted better in that situation and learn from it? This is the only way that you can improve, learning from your mistakes. So if you make a mistake and quit, you don't learn from it. You've just quit and now you've moved on to the next thing. Because if you fail once and quit at everything that you do, you will never achieve anything and you will spiral down further and further down this dark path, the path of bad habits, the path of negativity. This is the path that we don't want. So the next point is taking advice from people that don't care to improve themselves about how to improve yourself. So your parents try to tell you how you should live your life when they are clearly out of shape and don't really like their lives. Or your teachers who are horrible, moody people tell you about what you should do with your life in the future. Who the hell are they to tell you what you should do with your life in the future? Do you want to be like your teachers? If you don't want to be like your teachers, why are you listening to them? If you don't aspire to be like your parents, why are you listening to them? Some of you out there might have like one of your parents and you might feel like, you know, you look up to them. If you look up to them, then, then, then I guess maybe you can listen to what they say. But for most of us, we don't really aspire to be like our parents. As, as bad as it sounds, I don't want to sound too horrible or nothing, but it's the truth. We don't really aspire to be like our parents. So why would we listen to what they have to say about what we should do with our life. There are some things that they can say because what they have is life experience, which is what we don't have. But when they're trying to tell you what to do with your life, it's kind of like, I don't want to be in your position. You, you're you struggling with your money. You obviously have bad money management. So why would I aspire to do what you're telling me to do? If you know, if that makes sense. It's far better to listen to someone who's ahead of you on your journey online or someone you aspire to be like than people who aren't on their self-improvement journey, AKA, 90% of the population. But this is why I love the self-improvement space online so much, especially YouTube, because there's so many young guys that are just sort of ahead of most people on their journeys. And they're just sitting here, just teaching their lessons to everyone else. And this just inspires so many young people to actually take the right actions and change their life for the better. So the next point is blaming your circumstances and complaining about them. You cannot control your circumstances. So what is complaining about them going to do? Instead of blaming your circumstances, I want you to thank them for who you are. So if you, for example, want to start your own YouTube channel and you don't have the best equipment, I want you to thank almost the world or thank the universe or thank God or whatever you believe in for putting you in this situation. Because if you can create success with nothing, that is powerful. If you can, you know, get a good physique without the gym, with just doing at home workouts, that is powerful because once you add the gym into that, you're going to be a different kind of beast. Some people think that they need literally everything to be perfect for them to have success, but they don't. And there's this, there's this saying from um, an actor, his name's Sean Whalen, and it says, your mess is your message. And for me, this is important because strong character is built in hard times. So if you want a strong character, you must have a hard life. If you have an easy life, so you haven't went through any struggle or anything, this creates a weak character but we want a strong character. I made a video a couple of days ago on seven habits of 
young people that have got been that are highly successful, like Iman Gadzi and Hamza. And one of the traits was they focused on their character before the income because the character creates the income. So you having a strong character is what's going to help you create the life that you want to live. Now, the next point is avoiding discomfort. As we all know, growth cannot come from inside the comfort zone. The reason your muscles grow in the gym when you lift heavier than the week before is because you are putting your muscles outside of its comfort zone, forcing it to grow. And we are the exact same as this. We grow only when we are outside of our comfort zone. So I've made the most progress in my life when I've went through things that I was kind of fearful of before I faced it head on. Like I was one of those people that was scared to go into the gym because I was so skinny and I just thought, I don't really understand anything about the gym. Everyone there is like going to be way ahead of me and I'm just going to be this noob. So I don't really want to go. But once I went into the gym, I kind of realized that it's not that bad. Like everyone else that's there is there because they want to improve. And that sort of just proved this. Most of the time, the things that we think are scary end up not being that bad when we're actually doing it. It's just the mental gymnastics we do before telling ourselves how bad it is. So, you know, right now, there's probably something that you want to do, but you're kind of scared of. It could be anything. I can name a million examples, but there's something you want to do and you are too scared to do it. If you just take the first step and try it, you're going to realize on the other side, it's not that bad. And then you can make just so much more progress in your life. Now, the next point is making promises to yourself and breaking them. You lose respect for yourself when you break your own promises. You tell yourself tomorrow I'm going to exercise as soon as I wake up. The next morning you wake up and you minus his goal on social media for hours. Every single time that you break your own promise, you trust yourself less and less to the point where you can't do anything you set out to do because you don't listen to yourself. And also you lose respect from others by breaking promises to them or if they see you break your own promises. So breaking your own promises just sort of creates this loop where you trust yourself less and less and less and less to the point of where you literally, if you try and tell yourself to do some, something, you can't do it because you're just like, I'm not going to do it. So I don't know why I'm saying that. And then you just don't get anything done. So the way that you can reverse this is by setting yourself a very, very small goal, very easy, small goal. I always say this to people. If you want to try and meditate, try and meditate for 10 seconds. If you want to try and get into the gym, go to the gym and do one set. Something so small is so easy to achieve that what you're building now is this, I keep my promises to myself so that when you start to do bigger tasks and harder tasks, you believe that you'll be able to do it because you know that you keep promises to yourself. Now, this is the final point, playing video games for 12 hours a day. I could make 10 videos on this topic, but imagine you put all of those hours you've ever put into video games into actually improving your life. Like look here, Call of Duty Black Ops 3, 1,500 hours. FIFA 15, 3,600 hours. FIFA 16, 1,500 hours. GTA, I feel like GTA is a lot more than that. It says 1,500, but I feel like it's more 3,000 hours, but I don't know. Add all of them hours up, you're looking at what? 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000. It's like 7,000 or something hours, and that's not even all the games I've played. I've played loads more games than that. Imagine if I put 8,000 hours into something else, something that could improve my life. Imagine if I put 8,000 hours into YouTube. I'd already have a million subscribers. I'd already be making the kind of money that I want to make. So video games is a habit we form because we don't know what else to do with our lives at the time. If you had found self-improvement before video games, you'd find it hard to become addicted to video games because you'd find self-improvement more fun. So ditch the video games because trust me, it is not worth it. It wastes your life. It wastes all of your time. And you're going to, if you're 13, 14, 15 right now and you're addicted to video games, by the time you get to 20, you're going to just think, why did I waste all of those years playing video games? You might try and tell yourself, oh, like I have a couple of cool memories. Like I remember when we, when we done this, when we chilled these people on GTA. It's not the real world. It's a fake virtual video game world that doesn't exist here. Real memories are way more precious than these video game memories. So ditch the video games. It's not worth it. Now, if you follow these, I think there was 10 points that I made in this video, as well as the inversion thinking for anything in your life that you want to do, you know, if you want to achieve something, you invert it and you think, what can I, what do I need to do to fail it? And then list those points and do the opposite. And you're aware of this light path and dark path and you choose to go down the light path. Life is going to be good for you. Just because you're a teenager, you don't need to delay self-improvement. You're going to be 20 one day and it's going to come around like this. It's going to come around so fast. You, you will not believe it. You're going to wake up tomorrow and you're going to be 20 years old. You're going to wake up next week and you're 25 years old. So get on your self-improvement shit now, get ahead of everyone else, get a head start on life because you've got time. You've got so much time to, to spend on improving yourself. Your journey has just begun.
but what's waiting on the other side is so beautiful. The confidence, the happiness, the love of life, being able to look after people that you care about. That side of life is just so amazing. And I know that you're going to be able to achieve it, but you have to put in the work and you have to listen to what I'm saying in this video and actually apply it. I know you've got this. I'm out.